Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch's Kerbal Space Program, the space program where we try and do things by the books and within all the parameters set out before us, but inevitably forget some very vital process in the particular step of everything, and then have to throw everything out the window just to try and go and fix that. Hi guys, welcome back, how's it going? You can see in the background here we are working on Aldrin's Chariot, the space plane that I've been trying to get working like functionally for a while now, and it's not really working out very well. I'm trying to add extra fuel here, but I would like to take a moment to roll back to the first screen we saw when we uh, started this episode up. Out here in the space center, you can see on my alarm clock that we don't really have too much set up to go at the moment. We have a moho encounter in three days, and then we don't have a jewel encounter for like a hundred days. So this to me screams it's time for some money grinding. The main reason being I want to do up my, my tracking center, my R&D, I'd like to get the space plane hangar sorted. Basically, I want to try and do up everything, or at least upgrade everything on the on the um space center and as launch those random satellites to these random orbits is actually one of the best ways to earn money i thought maybe we'd do it with space planes as it's the cheapest way of doing that so here we are in the space plane hangar trying to get aldrin's chariot at least working uh, reasonably well you'll see i'm putting here in the uh, cargo bay a fair payload if i can get this into space i reckon i can get any satellite that i care to think about into space or at least this is the plan this is the plan indeed so if i've got a few niggles for starters if you look at the kerbal engineer up there you'll see that i'm taking nearly an entire rocket's worth of fuel into orbit with me and these uh, pods in the middle here haven't actually been taken into account with that so i have essentially just built a rocket I've not clicked this at the time though, and so we're going to try and make it work as a plane. Though I am sure it will come as no greater shock for the vast majority of you out there to know that if I strap a rocket with some wings on the side and don't use any rocket engines, we're going for a dream. So my main diagnosis here was too much fuel, not enough wings. So we took off the back portion of the side tanks, added a whole lot more wing to it and got to something that looks a little bit like this, which was quite nice. I quite enjoyed the, the look of it. Let's take it outside and see how it runs. Now, I know I was in trouble when I ran off the edge of the runway and still couldn't pull up. So obviously everything is just still far, far too heavy, though things do kind of travel quite well because we are going at a hell of a speed. I mean, look at those bits just get thrown there. They ain't coming back. They're never coming back. So we make it a wee bit lighter by taking the middle fuel tanks out of the uh, cargo bay here. And remarkably, whoosh, we are in the air. This great, but here comes our first attempt at like pushing up actually into orbit. You can see that I'm only at 23 uh, kilometers up. My apoapsis is the same 23 kilometers. Firing my rocket engines. Everything's just not going well, like to the point of I am slowing down with my rocket engines here. I almost reverted the flight at this point, but I was like, no, let's let it burn through. Let's see what happens. And I can tell you now what happens is that we just did not make it into orbit in any way, shape or form. We're just too dang heavy for the, all the engines we've got on the back here. Now, the logical choice would be to put more engines on, but no, 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 that's not my choice. Bonus explosions. So back in the space plane hangar, and I've completely stripped it down here. I've changed the side fuel tanks for these tiny, tiny little ones here. Kept, this is mainly so I can keep the ram intakes on the begin on the front there, just so. Well, these things are so much more powerful than any of the other air, uh, air intakes that we have access to. And now I'm just trying to build up a viable wing. Now, as with air intakes and with engines, I never really know how much wing to put on a on a vessel. Like, at what point does it stop being an aircraft and starts becoming just a flying wing? Now, I know like a flying wing is a type of aircraft, but there there is definitely a line that one can cross when they when they get up to that sort of edge of the, the the envelope there and you know i'm not sure whether i cross it it's like especially with things like air intakes like i could i could have just absolutely spam covered this thing with air intakes now probably would have made things a little bit easier to deal with but i would have felt like it wasn't quite as elegant as it could have been and and that's that's kind of what it's all about it's all about my my interpretation of the system in front of me right uh, okay so <laughs> with that said we're now going to use the uh, gizmos and gadgets to try and get everything as clipped as possible so it looks like smooth and shiny and and looking really good next up i've noticed that my center of lift is too far forwards uh, really uh, once all the fuel starts draining out the center of mass is going to start moving around and that center of lift is going to find itself ahead of the center of mass which to me screams badness so i want to try and make everything move around um bring more center of lift 
in at the right places, more mass at the right places, and, and just try and make everything work as well as possible. One of the tips that I've received regarding such things as lift and wings and stuff like that is to try and put more stuff underneath so there's a bit more of a, a lifting force underneath. And that also, you see how my center of lift is above my center of mass? Now, this is because of these tail planes on the back here, or at least that is what I've assumed it is. They're the only ones that are actually higher than my center of mass. But also, a quick side note, now that I've moved those tail planes around, look how far forward my center of lift is, lift is of my center of mass. This was not how we were looking at, like, literally five seconds ago. I'm not sure what caused that to happen, and even when I go and try and put the tail planes back where they were, no, nothing happened. So I've now got to construct an entire new tail assemblage just to try and get that center of lift further back again, which I think I kind of handled quite well. I mean, there was a lot of mucking around, putting things in places, turning them around in all sorts of weird rotations, but eventually we got this. Uh, bang on the center of mass so i'm a little bit dubious about it but with the ways that like fuel drains and stuff like that i think we can handle it so space planes kind of have three big moments of testing the first one we are undergoing right now, this is of course the takeoff. Now I have a few things that I have to watch out for here. First off, you can see how low my engine is down to the ground there. So thankfully I run off the end of the runway everything was good i did have control i kept on trying to put pitch up but it just looked like my engines were getting too close uh the next major point of stress is of course up in the higher reaches of the atmosphere where we need to see how long it takes before our engines burn out and i think a 23 kilometer apple apps is not a, a terrible one to be aiming for uh, it is racing away ahead of me at quite a speed but also my air intakes are starting to drag you can tell by the sound of the engines and also the colors that are going on there there was a little bit of a deviation in my flight path this was my cue to hit the abort button uh, once again because my space plane hangar does not have the full custom action groups I bound everything sort of as a toggle switch to my abort this of course meant that uh, rich male and Riven here had no abort sequence if things went wrong but you know it's all right this is a simulation we can do things like that uh, and we are flying well we are already up to 30 kilometers ourselves and our apple apsis is already up to 40 kilometers uh, we are seeing like the atmosphere drop a wave around us and all the stars come up to welcome us up to orbit you'll see my apple apsis there is up at 74 kilometers and for once I have the patience to wait until I'm really close to my apoapsis and then just start sort of, I was going to say feather in the engine, but just giving it little bursts. Uh, watching, I'm mainly watching my time until my apoaps. Uh, when that gets far, too far away from me, I, I turn my engines off and wait. And then when it's less than 10 seconds, I fire my engines. And this is just kind of keeping my apoaps nice and low close to me because I know we don't have too much fuel to go up here. But also pushing my periaps up. And you'll see here now with just this final little shove we are now in a perfectly circular orbit well i say perfectly circular we've got a 74 versus 100 that's pretty good uh, and now i just um, throw in a maneuver node so i know when i need to be making my deorbit burn which was literally just burning retrograde when i was over the desert i then let my uh, gravity fall you know the amount i fall down naturally due to the the force of gravity to pull me deep enough into the atmosphere so that when we were down sort of 10 kilometers or so i could fire up my engines this is the ideal height for these engines to be working at at least on this vessel and we're just going to come in for an approach here this of course being the part of the flight where pilot error is punished the hard hardest and all oh, what pilot error but we are down safe and sound this is the main thing uh rich mill and riven have gone up in a space plane done an entire orbit and come back to tell the tale about it even if they did blow up all their engines on the rear of the vehicle but that's okay here we are on the runway and all i'm going to do is turn around so we can get the 100 percent recovery but that's all the testing done. What's the next process? Well, it is, of course, putting more satellites into orbit. So I picked up a contract to put a standard nondescript satellite into a specific orbit around Minmus. This is the satellite we're going to go for. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go with the naming convention of little orphan children out of classic uh, novels with a slight spacey twist. So this is Tinny Tim, of course. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Now, with our new space plane technology, it really doesn't take us long until we are circularizing our burn around Kerbin. We are, of course, in low Kerbin orbit. Where else would we be with this particular space plane? And a fairly circular orbit here. We've got 137 against 54 periaps. That's not great, but with that said have you seen how much oxidizer i don't have at the moment so kind of have to make do with what we've got uh we're going to let go of the satellite here and 
notice one of the many issues with this. There is no monoprop, well, there is monoprop, but there is no RCS to make that work. Uh, so we're going to go around and make ourselves a, a bit of a maneuver node. Of course, we're going to Minma, so we need to be as exact as possible. Something around there will, of course, do. We're aiming for about uh, 100, 120 uh, periaps, so we'll try and set that up to the best of our ability. So somewhere about there is good enough for me. And mere minutes later, we are making the burn. As usual, we overshoot a little bit. I'll tell you one thing now, guys. If you make one of these tiny satellites, for the love of everything that you believe in, just make sure you do some little uh, engine modifications here. Like these, these tiny engines here are so overpowered for what I've put on this that it's just it's impossible to do any sort of precision flying. You'll see there that I'm using these smallest little puffs, and wow, the, the changes are just un real okay so the next thing is to try and put down this um space plane uh, i'm thinking that we can just kind of cruise into our 50 kilometer uh periaps here with the plan in mind that i could just kind of nose down and hopefully the aerodynamic drag will pull me down uh let's ignore the fact that i'm nosing up at the moment this is mainly all to do with time warping capabilities uh, i was face facing in one direction and so i sped up time so suddenly we're looking down uh, so we've gone past our periaps and i'm like oh no what could i possibly do here and i make one of the worst decisions i could on this flight i waste my oxidizer right there i'm like all right let's just burn down everything will go all right we'll cancel out this uh, upward velocity right not enough it, it did do exactly what i thought it would do but it didn't do it anywhere near enough and we're now sailing over the space center at quite a rate i'm trying to use my jet fuel of course we are just far too high so we're just gonna have to go around for another orbit in the meantime let's go see gene hey buddy and have a look at all these contracts that are available to me so there are quite a few that are available on the moon uh which to me is a short-term mission that we can pull off relatively quickly uh we have to plant a flag on the moon uh do some gravity surveys with the seismic data that that's easy enough and uh, i'm also going to take on you can see in the sort of the the top middle of the list the science data from space around kerbin i think we're also going to take that and once that's all done should we go over to the vab and make a decent build before i get too far ahead of myself i need to come over to the r d building and buy this this is specifically for the stack separator but i just wanted to show you guys this is what i was doing i was buying the advanced metal works uh mainly for this vessel that we are just about to go and build so this vessel is entirely for these past three contracts that we just picked up what we're going to have on top is of course a manned a manned lander uh, directly underneath that we're going to have the rover that's going to go around and do all the seismic data surveys or at least that was the plan spoilers for next episode but anyway uh and then uh, around all that we're going to strap things like the landing mechanism then underneath that we're going to have the lift and I present to you Solomon's Arrow, which is going to stay sat on this launch pad until we brought Aldrin's chariot back down, because now that we're outside of the VAB, time is ticking on and, you know, it might crash at any time. So I said we would have to wait for one orbit, and indeed we do have to wait for one orbit. And another. And maybe on the third one, we're getting down slow enough to be able to just tumble through the atmosphere and make down for our landing eventually. But here we are tumbling through the atmosphere as we've been inside the shadow for curbing for so long now that we are indeed running out of power. So I want to try and turn my SAS off and just let the aerodynamic drag point me in the right direction. Uh, of course, at this 20 kilometer mark, we could fire our engines up, but I'm literally just trying to slow us down enough here to be able to come in for a landing maybe on the ground over there to the right uh, to the left because it has been so long that we are well beyond the scope of the space center rich Mellon raven of course coming back after there oh this is something like fourth or fifth time out in space they are fast becoming some of my most experienced kerbals aside from of course the original three that are out on juna but you know there is not any favoritism pl play in this this space center apart from when it comes to jeb and that is anti-favoritism because we all hate Jeb. Anyway, we're coming down for a nice gentle landing in the in the desert. And if you guys will remember, my landings have not gone particularly well to the, to this date. So I'm a little bit worried about what's going to happen. Uh, flaring too hard, so we end up going up a lot. But as we eventually come down close enough, I realise how flat this desert is. And it is absolutely beautiful for landing on. So use deserts when you can, guys. Joining Matford on the launch pad, I'm going to have to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. We have run out of everything that we are trying to do here. Uh, run out of time to show you everything 
we are trying to do here. If you would like to know the fate of Matford and his fabled moon mission, please do join me on Wednesday where we'll be completing this, dealing with satellites, uh, even space planes and space junk that we threw out to the middle of the solar system. All these are yet to come on the next episode of Twitchy's Kerbal Space Programme. Please do share this episode if you've enjoyed it. It is one of the things that really does help my name get out there and I would be forever grateful if you could do that. But until then, I will say goodbye. Bye! <coughs>